Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and I think that this might be possibly one of the most important messages that I've ever done in a video. And it relates to something that I actually saw last night in a video that I watched made by Canadian Prepper. And in that video, he said something. He mentioned an idea that I've never, ever heard anyone else in the prepping preparedness community mention other than myself very frequently in the comment section of this channel. Uh, and it got me thinking, uh, and again, I don't watch every video out there, maybe other people have mentioned this idea, but it's certainly not very popular. And it, it got me thinking about the idea that this is a really important idea and it, it deserves to be mentioned in a video, not just you know relegated down to the comments where I'm kind of pushing back against uh, something that someone's saying. And it relates to everything that's going on in the world right now. Um, People from the outside see prepping, uh, and by outside I mean like people who aren't into prepping, they look at preppers, and oftentimes there's like one word that comes to mind when they think of preppers, uh, and, and it's not well dressed. <laughs> it is uh, conspiracy. Uh, you know, preppers and conspiracy very frequently are seen as being two sides of the same coin by people outside the prepping community, and there's good reason for that. There are a lot of preppers who prescribe to a lot of conspiracy theories, and I should say right from the outset, uh, I don't think that conspiracies don't happen. I think they happen all the time. In fact, it's kind of a normal part of life. You know, if you run a company and you have a competitor company, you're going to have closed meetings where you're going to be wanting to keep, you know, certain proprietary things secret and you're not going to want the other company to know about it. That's a conspiracy. I mean, the, the root word, uh, the etymology of the word conspiracy comes from the idea of people uh, breathing closely together. Uh, conspiracy, it's like respiration. You know, the people breathing closely together privately Scheming, it's the idea of scheming. Scheming happens all the time. It's companies do it, countries certainly do it. When there's one country and there's rival countries and they don't want you know, the rival country to know everything about what they're doing, uh, you know, so they keep things se secret, for, you know, both from the rival country and the general public, because you, know, you tell the general public and then everybody would know. Uh, the idea that people privately do things and keep it secret, which is a conspiracy, you know, a, a, a private plan to do something, uh, there's nothing sensational about that. People do it all the time. That's generally accepted as a way of doing business. Uh, yeah, conspiracies happen all the time, but that doesn't mean that everything in the world is necessarily caused by a conspiracy. And I think there are a lot of people in the prepping community that see it that way. They, you know, stick it like a sticky note on everything. You know, uh, COVID, conspiracy, climate change, conspiracy, human-caused climate change, double conspiracy. Right there, uh, Nibiru coming in, it's like Planet X, it's a, a secret planet that's going to uh, collide with the Earth, or some killer asteroid, it's like, you know, being kept secret, conspiracy. Um, all these things, uh, you know, really, you know, uh, appropriately in the general public give uh, the idea that, uh, you know, preppers are into conspiracies. And I think a lot of the preppers that believe in a lot of these conspiracies, I think that they see themselves when they're, you know, prescribing to these ideas and certainly sharing these ideas with like the norms that, you know, don't prescri uh, prescribe to these ideas. They see that as putting them in a position of being kind of like the dark, gritty realist. You know, I don't have any rose-colored glasses. I don't see rainbow and sunshine everywhere. I'm, 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 not, I'm no Pollyanna that believes every happy story that gets told to me. You know, if there's a, an alternate, darker version of this that in, involves a conspiracy especially, that's the, the version that I'm going to, to believe. And I think that a lot of people that do that uh, feel that that puts them kind of in a role of being like a realist, but a pessimistic realist. You know, uh, you know they're, they're not just some rainbow and sunshine optimist that'll just believe any happy thing. It's like, uh, the world's a dark, gritty place, and I'm, you know, uh, choosing kind of to see things in that like grown up, mature, negative kind of way. Um, I see it the opposite. Though. I do not see the idea of conspiracy theory as being uh, a negative way of viewing the events unfolding in the world. I really view it as being, uh, honestly, kind of a comforting way of looking at the world. Because what is the alternative? Take climate change, for example. You know, people are saying uh, that, uh, well, I just spoke to someone yesterday that said that, uh, you know, all the flooding going on, uh, or all the droughts going on, it was the droughts, uh, they were saying, you know, that is just completely being caused by the government, because it's been proven, <laughs> you hear that word a bit, it's been proven that the government can cloud seed, and they, you know, they could cause it to rain if they wanted to, so they're intentionally doing this. Well, that is a, a really comforting thought, if the alternative is that this is completely out of human control. 
If you are a believer of the idea that there, everything is created by a vast conspiracy of Kabbalists who are all, you know, scheming, they've got, they, you know, we're starting here uh, and they've got this, this dark plan or stratagem and we're going to go through all these like evil, you know, uh, plot points and then we're going to end up here at this, this dark outcome that's going to be, you know, uh, you know, the fulfillment of the plan of the 1% of the Illuminati or, or whatever you want to, uh, you know, have as, you know, your, uh, your dark force behind all of it. Uh, that, that end, that outcome, that's still created by humans. And those humans, you know, they might be, you know, evil one percenters or whatever. You know, by the way, on one percenters, I know some people that make an awful lot of money, a hell of a lot more than I do and probably more than you do. And they also pay a hell of a lot more taxes than I do. You know, the idea, I, I, I know that there are some uh, documented cases of super rich people not paying their taxes, but most of the rich people in the world pay a crap load of taxes. And we should all appreciate that because a lot of the rest of us, you know, I, I know my taxes are not sufficient to create all the public services that I benefit from, roads, fire departments, all that kind of stuff. You know, um, anyway, that's, that's a, a complete tangent off to the side. But um, anyway, if you want to view, you know, the, you know, the super wealthy people as being, you know, these evil people, they still have families, they still have, you know, they, they sit on the toilet, they still poop, they're still human beings. And this dark future is still something that's created by humans. There's some kind of a, a human presence there. If it's by, if our future is being created not by humans, but by chaos, who knows what the hell that's going to be? It could be anything. Uh, in, in terms of climate change, this could be the, where I'm sitting right now, these rocks all around me, baked in, you know, million degree temperatures orbiting the sun like Mercury. It could be anything. And I think that a lot of people that prescribe to the idea of conspiracy theories uh, for everything, and again, conspiracies happen all the time, but uh, saying that everything is due to a conspiracy uh, is a really comforting thought for exactly the reason that I said, because at least it's a human plan. It's not completely outside of our uh, grasp. It's not completely outside of uh, morality and ethics to some degree. There's still a human touch there, but there's no guarantee of any of that for COVID or, you know, whatever the, you know, I, you know, COVID is not a great example because it's one of the least horrifying plagues that we've ever faced as, a, as humans. You know, m millions of people have died uh, uh, because of it, but you know, you compare it to other plagues, it's uh, a pale comparison of things that humans have gone through in the past. Um, but uh, you know, the next superbug, there's no guarantee that any of this is even survivable. And I think people forget that, you know, specifically with the idea of superbugs, you know, people say, oh, you know, the, the, the elite are gonna release this superbug and it's gonna be designed to to kill people. Well, if there's a plan, there's going to be some people on the other end of that, you know, unless things go, you know, crazy wrong. But and again, in this mastermind conspiracy, nothing goes wrong because, you know, even if you think that something went against what the, uh, these, you know, uh, conspirators were planning, wait long enough and you'll actually find out that that was exactly what they wanted to happen. <laughs> the, whole, the same thing happened with Donald Trump being elected. You know, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the deep state government would never allow him to be elected. And then he got elected and people, you know, twisted things around and we're like, well, they want him for some reason, you know, it, not everything is controlled by people. And that is a terrifying thought, I think, to a lot of us. The idea that uh, all this is dark conspiracy is, um, that's the comforting way of viewing the world because it has some kind of a guaranteed outcome, some guarantee that, uh, you know, humans at least have a plan for all of this. And I think this deer fly wants me to shut up and stop talking. And I think I've conveyed the message here. There's no guarantee what that is. And saying that somebody else is creating this situation uh, does two things. One, it, uh, it takes all the blame off of you, and people like that. No one wants to feel blamed for anything. But the second thing is it, it disempowers you. It takes all the power away from you. Because if somebody else that is so smart and so, uh, you know, so forward-looking and so um, omniscient, I think is not an inappropriate word to describe the way a lot of people view conspirators, um, if someone is so uh, godlike, almost, um, there's no point in even fighting against it uh, or struggling to try to make things better, to try to make a better future. So uh, believing things that way not only you know, might make you feel better, but it also completely disempowers you. And, um, and I think that that is too big of a price to pay 
for the positive fuzzy feelings we get about like, well, at least it's not my fault or at least humans design that. At least it's not in the cold, uh, valueless, moralless, completely unethical, completely inhuman hands of chaos. And uh, I think that's important to think about because uh, this is important where we're headed. And I think a lot of us have way more control over that direction to be able to bend it than we give ourselves credit for. And when we give away all of our um, power to do that, it's a huge mistake. I prep not because I want these dark futures to happen, but because when we fail and people oftentimes fail, I want to be ready for it, but it doesn't mean I want that to happen. I know there's some preppers out there that talk about how, you know, they can't wait for that. Give them 48 hours in that. What's ahead of us? It's not better than where we are right now. Whatever we can do to change that fact and make tomorrow better than today, I think we should take that opportunity. And I'm going to take this opportunity and listen to that deer fly who hasn't bitten me yet and, uh, and wrap this video up. But think about that. Not everything in the world necessarily is a conspiracy. Although that doesn't mean that nothing is. <laughs> That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode is brought to you in part by Burning Hearth Homestead, a nonprofit that aims to provide seeds, live plants, and education to the community both local and extended. Plant seeds, plant knowledge, plant the future. If you'd like to thank them for supporting this channel or find out more about what they do, go to burninghearthhomestead.org. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.